Hi there, I'm Ray from 8Base and today I'm going to take you on a tour of the App Builder. By the end of this video, you won't know how every little piece inside the App Builder works, but you will know where to find where you're trying to go. Let's get started. If you've worked in App Builder before, this should look familiar to you. If not, this is the 8Base App Builder. Let's go through it piece by piece. So at the top left here, you're going to see the name of your current application as well as your current page. And underneath, you'll see the path to the page that you're working on. If you click on any of these, you'll open up the menu item for pages. In the middle here, you're going to see an option to change your viewport size. Now, it's important to know that this doesn't actually change anything in terms of the responsiveness of the application. This merely changes the viewport size that you're seeing in your canvas. This can also be custom done by changing values here, or you can come to the actual canvas, grab these handlebars, and move it up and down to get the size that you're looking for. If you want to actually change things from a responsiveness perspective, you can go into this edit media queries rules and get access to all of your different media queries and start setting class values there. Next, you're going to see we have this backup button as well as a drop down right next to it. So what this does is this gives you the ability to back up the application that you're working on at a certain point in time. This will save the application and then back it up. And so if you're doing a bunch of changes and you want to restore back to that, you can simply click the drop down and click the version that you want to restore. Next to that is your save button. This actually saves the application. So you can see right now we have a green dot. And if we make any changes whatsoever, like let's say uh, we change shirt to kit here, you'll see that that green dot actually changes to red. The red means that you have changes that haven't been saved yet. And when you click on the save button and the save occurs, that dot will change to green. Next are our preview and deploy buttons. Now preview gives you the option to take a look at what your application would look like when deployed, whereas deploy actually deploys the application to production. We have another video that goes into a bit more detail on this. Next, you can see we have this errors and uh, warnings buttons. And what this does is this indicates to you if there's any errors inside of your application or any warnings. So right now with these checkboxes, you can see that we don't have any errors, we don't have any warnings. But let's say we were to try to reference a variable that doesn't exist, call that potato. You can see that now our error here has actually changed to one, indicating that we're trying to reference something that's not defined. Let's change that back so that we have uh, no errors in our actual application. This help button here will give you a lot of resources to be able to learn more about 8Base and how to use the App Builder. This Teams icon right here actually indicates when there are multiple users working on the same application. Here you'll be able to click and see all of the different users that are currently working in the application. So your coworkers, the developers that you work with on this application will show up here when they're using it in real time at the same time as you. Finally, this last button here gives you the option to log out of the app builder. Now that we've got the top done, let's go down the left. So the first icon we see here is our pages menu item. And what this does is it gives you the option to navigate between pages, check the settings for your pages. Um, it also lets you do the same thing for layouts and as well as dialogue. So pages, layouts, and dialogues each have their own section where you can create and manage. You have a search bar here if you want to uh, you know, narrow down the options that are available. Next, we have state. And in state, there's going to be two options. There's going to be local, which is state that's local to the page, and global, which is state values that are global to the entire application. Again, we have a search bar, so you can uh, narrow things down if you want. And uh, the state is separated into different sections. So we have custom entries, which are all state variables that you created manually or that have been created when you drag and drop uh, certain uh, input components onto your canvas. Requests is all of the state values that are related to data requests. Resources are all of the resources that you have set up for your application. And router is basically state values for all of the pages that you have. It's important to note that router state values are available in your code with router dot and resources state values are available in your code with resources dot. Requests and custom entries can be referenced directly. Next, we have our page structure uh, menu item. And the page structure menu item gives you the complete layout of the actual page that you're on. So you can see here we have teams, uh, which is a typography. And as you're moving around, uh, you can see that highlighting is happening inside of the page structure. And when you click on something, it will become available, it will become selected 
in your page structure and it works the opposite way too if you want if you're let's say you're having trouble clicking on an outer uh, container and you want to get access to it you can actually come into your page structure and click on the container itself and you'll have that container selected now it's important to note that page structure is also a good way for you to access your hidden content so things like global dialogues if i come up to here and i click on hidden canvas nodes you can see that these are the global dialogues that are available and i can actually show and hide these by clicking on the eye icon. So here you can see that that global dialogue is now showing. And if I click it again, it's now hidden. Page structure is also a good place to access things that are hidden by conditional rendering. So if I had this manager typography and I had a conditional rendering that said, you know, uh, show if uh, false, which will always hide it. When I click away, you can see that that's now hidden. But if I come into my page structure, I'm still able to select that. And I could technically show it, even though my conditional rendering still doesn't give the option to show it. Next, we have our requests menu item. And this is where we have all of our uh, GraphQL or REST requests to get data. You can see, once again, this is separated by local, which is requests that are specific to the page, and global, which are requests that are globally available to all pages in the application. You still have search capability uh, with a lot of the other things. And when you click on in, you get access to all of your request information. We'll go into greater detail on requests in another video. Next, we have the functions menu item. This once again is separated into local functions for just this page or global functions that are available to the entire application. Same search capability. And when you click on a function, you get access to the actual function code as well as the arguments that can be passed through. Next, we have our themes menu item. And themes is where you're going to find a lot of information related to the styling of your application. So here we have color, we have uh, typography, we have custom CSS. So if you want a global CSS uh, class, you can access it here. Uh, font management, media queries, basically anything that has to do with the styling of your application on a global level, you can find by coming into the theme menu. Next, uh, we have assets. And so assets are where you are going to upload and manage static files that you want to use inside of your application. So you can see here as a good example, I have the logo for this application in my list of assets. And then when I come here under my layout, which I clicked wrong, come here under my layout, you can see right here this logo, which references that asset. So if you need to add images into your application, statically you don't have to manage it in the back you can just come into your assets add those assets here and then use them inside of your application the next pane is resources and resources are where you're able to connect to graphql or rest apis in order to bring data into your application so data inside of an a-based application is typically a very quick four-step process of resource then request then state then page We'll get into greater detail for that in a different video, but that's generally how data works. And the resources is kind of the first step to that. So in here, you'll be able to select any of your eight base backend workspaces that are available to you inside of your account. You can also create custom access to GraphQL API resources or custom access to a REST API. Finally, we have our settings menu item. And this gives you access to general settings for the application, including things like header code and footer code. So if you want to implement uh, a script tag or, you know, if you want to add metadata to your application, this is where you would do it. In addition, we have the library section, and this is where we manage uh, third party libraries for the application. Deployment is where you manage uh, more of the settings for deployment, things like your SSL certificate, um, or, you know, if you're using a different domain than the eight base domain, this is where you would manage all of that. And then global navigation is for uh, global events, the, the before each and the after each. So here is where you would put code that you would want to be executed before every page is loaded. In this application, we have, you know, theme mode related stuff as well as authentication related stuff. But this global navigation events is where you would put that. Now that we've got the menu sorted out, let's take a quick look at everything else that we're seeing here. Um, so the first thing we're seeing here is the canvas and the canvas is where, you know, we do all of the visual development of our pages. We have all of our different, uh, components. If I load my teams page here, you know, you can see that you have all of your components. I'm going to execute this request to get data in and 
this is where the canvas is where you do all of the magic, right? You have your components here that you can drag and drop onto your canvas. Um, and your canvas is where you kind of manage all the little pieces you can select, you can, you know, clone, delete components, do whatever you need to. The canvas is where all of the visual work happens. Finally, over on the right, we have our, uh, we have three different things that occur here on the right. We have our components, which is all of the individual components that you want to drag and drop on here. We have groups, which when you're creating a, a bunch of pieces of components together, you can actually, uh, group them and create a reusable component. And that will actually show up here under the group section. And finally, when you select a component, you're going to have three options that come up for every type of component. You have properties, you have styles, and you have events. Now properties is where you set all of the different component specific properties. So here you can have like ID, title, class. Um, these change depending on what component you're working with, but it's important to note that you also have this custom properties section. So if there's a property you're trying to set that doesn't exist inside of this uh, properties container, you can add a custom property. So for example, let's say ARIA labels are important to you. I can uh, set an ARIA label here, give it a value that says, uh, I don't know, team container. Um, and I've set a custom property for that component. The next pane for every component is styles. And this is where you do all of the styling for your components. Now we have a lot of common ones, depending on what you're working with. For example, a container, you know, you have all of your layout stuff, there's spacing, flexing grid related stuff, sizing, and all of these, once again, change depending on the component that you're working with. If you're working with a typography, right, you can see a lot of uh, text related stuff here. And it's important to note that once again, we want you to be able to customize everything. So even if there's a CSS style that doesn't make sense here, you can use custom style in order to set whatever CSS you want. So for example, we have, you know, this little icon here that shows off uh, the color of kit, the color of shirt that the team wears. And you can see there's a little shadow underneath uh, to make it stand out a bit more. Now there's no standard uh, there's no standard setting here to be able to set CSS filters, which is what's used for that shadow because it's an icon. So if you come down into custom style, you can see that I've set standard CSS here to create a drop shadow filter inside of CSS. So even if you don't find the style you're looking for here, you can just add it the way you need to. Finally, we have the events pane and the events pane is what gives you access to write JavaScript code for JavaScript actions. So if we come here in our events and we hit plus, you can see that for an icon, you can do a click, a mouse over, a mouse out, mouse down, mouse up, all of the different events that are uh, available to HTML components and HTML elements, you can find them on here. And when you click on one, you have the ability to choose whether or not you want to do a standard navigation, run a request, run custom code, run a function, which is a function that you create over in the function section or update a state variable. And if you click on any of these, then you have specific options to do the work that you want. The last thing to note is you're going to see this part a lot. So this is what's called a Monaco editor. And it's basically the ability for you to edit JavaScript and get access to all of the different things like autocomplete. So I can come in here and I can start typing out uh, state variables and you can see that they start showing up and you can just click into them and get access to all of the different autocomplete stuff that you're used to seeing inside of your own IDE. And this is available pretty much anywhere where you can write code, which is pretty much anywhere. Because if I look over here, let's say I've got a typography and I want to set the text, right? Well, I could set the text, you know, stand in a standard literal format by just saying, hi there. Or I could set the text with code. So here I have my code and I could say item.name, which is the name of the team. And that code shows up there. And in addition to that, when you click on uh, this expand button, this is where you can actually see the code. Now, these icons here change depending on what you're working with. So for the text of this text editor, right, I can go with a literal format of just text. I can go with code. I can choose a state variable and work through that. Um, or I can, you know, go back to literal here. I want to use the actual uh, name of the team in order to get you know my display working properly again but no matter whether you're working with properties or whether you're working with styles you can see that changing these values is not doesn't just have to be point and click it can be dynamic you can use code to change anything that you want well there we go i hope you have a better understanding of the app builder and how it works if you want to learn more head over to 8base academy 
You can check out 8Base Community to talk to 8Base engineers and 8Base developers. And be sure to check out the docs for more information as well. Until next time, happy coding.